Okay, so this is something fairly new to GCSE science, but it's been in A-level sciences and especially physics for a while. Proportionality. More to the point, how do we prove proportionality for a set of data? We have things that are directly proportional. Let's take an equation. F equals MA, Newton's second law. If mass is constant, that means it stays the same, then we know that if the force doubles, then the acceleration doubles. So we can say F is proportional to A. We use a fish or alpha symbol for that. So we can say when F doubles, so does A. Okay, so let's say that you've been given a table with some data. Let's say that it is force and acceleration, but it could be any two things. It could be two things that you've never seen before. And it doesn't matter what the units are either, because when it comes to proportionality, it's all to do with ratios. It doesn't matter if we measure force in newtons or pounds per square inch, the relationship is going to be the same regardless. So let's say you get given three lots of data here. You could get given more than this, but if you do it for three and you prove that they're proportional, then it should be fine. So how do we prove that they're directly proportional? We divide them. And actually, it doesn't matter which way around you do it. You can do force divided by acceleration or acceleration divided by force. But what I'm going to do is force divided by acceleration. I've written divide as an over there as a fraction. That's OK. So 10 divided by 1.2, that gives us 8.3. 30 divided by 3.6 also gives us 8.3. 80 divided by 9.6 also gives us 8.3. If the answers are all the same, then we've just proven that this data if the answers are all the same, then we've just proven that force and acceleration are proportional. So what if we're being asked to prove if two things are inversely proportional instead? Let's take speed v and time t. We can't say that v is proportional to t in this situation, but if they're inversely proportional, then we say it's proportional to 1 over t. So basically, this is the opposite of what we had earlier. What do you think we're going to do? Instead of dividing them, we're going to multiply them or times them. But look at this. I've thrown a spanner in the works here by giving two minutes, then 20 seconds, then 12 seconds. I can't do 10 times two, 60 times 20. Remember I said earlier, it doesn't matter what the unit is. Well, they do need to be all the same unit. So it doesn't matter whether it's minutes or seconds, so long as they're all the same. So first thing I need to do is change this into seconds. So that's gonna be 120 seconds. Okay, now I can multiply them out. 10 times 120, 1,200, 60 times 20, also 1,200, and 100 times 12. Of course, that's going to be 1,200 again. These are all the same. Therefore, V and T inversely proportional. So there we go. I hope that helps. If it did, please leave a like. And if you have any suggestions for what I can do for tips and tricks next time, then leave them in a comment down below. Bye for now.